Hello everyone, thank you for your interest in my talk about investigating the liquid transport kinetics of ceramic powder compacts using terahertz pulse imaging. Here is an outline of the talk. First, I will start with brief introduction and background, then I will explain the methodology and discuss the results, and finally, I will sum up with some conclusions. Ceramic materials are widely used in many industrial applications, such as filters, catalysts and catalyst supports, we have alumina as an example. They can also be used as pharmaceutical excipients. We have functionalized calcium carbonate and dicalcium phosphate as examples of pharmaceutical fillers. In this talk, I will focus on studying the water transport kinetics in one type of ceramic materials, which is alpha alumina. Alpha alumina is a stable phase of alumina with desirable features, including the high strength and hardness as well as the high temperature and corrosion resistance. Such phase of alumina has a number of industrial applications, including adsorbents and catalyst supports. The materials used for the terahertz water transport measurements are a range of alpha alumina powder compacts containing up to 5% of polymeric binder that were prepared using direct compaction. Further sets of these compacts were uh, with identical compaction uh, conditions were subjected to a heat treatment process, referred to as firing or centering. Centering is a crucial step in the processing of ceramic powder compacts, in which the green powder compact is transformed into a coherent body with controlled microstructure. It's worth mentioning that the alpha alumina samples are insoluble and non-swelling in water. The terahertz methods characterize the properties of materials using an electromagnetic radiation in the frequency range between the far infrared and microwaves on the electromagnetic spectrum. Short pulses of terahertz radiation are used for the terahertz experiments. There are a number of advantages of, of using such techniques, including the non-invasive and non-destructive nature of the measurements, the capability of resolving rapid liquid transport kinetics due to the high acquisition rate, and such techniques are inherently safe due to the low photon energy and low average power. However, the terahertz liquid transport measurements are one-dimensional measurements for the time being, whereas other techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging can provide information in more than one dimension. The experimental setup used for studying the water transport kinetics in the alpha alumina powder compacts consists of a terahertz pulse imaging system uh, with a customized flow cell that I designed and these are schematics of the design of the flow cell. If we look at the process flow diagram of the experimental setup, we have a peristaltic pump that is used to pump the water through an inlet valve to the flow cell, a terahertz uh, reflection probe to emit and detect the terahertz signal, a ventilation needle to allow the removal of the air trapped above the sample after closing the flow cell. This ventilation process is required to uh, avoid a two-phase uh, flow as air needs to escape the system upon the transport of water into the sample. Finally, we have an outlet valve to control the outlet flow and a drainage valve to control the waste flow and drain the flow cell once the experiment is finished. Terahertz pulse imaging exploits the difference between the refractive indices of the two media the terahertz pulse propagates through. So we get a reflection whenever there is a change in the refractive index. A change in the refractive index can be due to a change in the type of medium the terahertz pulse propagates through. So for the liquid transport measurements, we focus the terahertz radiation on the sample and we get first a reflection from the, sum, from the interface between A and the sample back face, which is represented by the positive peak in this plot. And then as the terahertz pulse propagates through the sample, we get, and before the liquid uh, has come in contact with the sample, we get another reflection peak from the interface between the sample front face and A, which is represented by the negative peak in this plot. And as water comes in contact with the sample, and due to the difference in the refractive indices of the wetted and the dry sample, 
we get another reflection peak from the, from the waterfront, which is represented by the positive peak here. And by doing continuous measurements and subsequently processing the data through a decomposition process with plotting each deconvolved waveform, we can monitor the movement of the liquid penetration front through the sample. And by tracking the positive peak of this liquid penetration front, we can get the liquid penetration profiles, which is the penetration depth as a function of time, for each sample. For some, uh, for swelling samples, uh, which is not the case for the samples in this talk, there is an increase in the thickness, and therefore this positive peak shifts. And by tracking the shift in this positive uh, peak, we can get an idea of the swelling behavior as a function of time. And now if we look at the average liquid penetration profiles of the alumina samples with the different heat treatment conditions fired and, and fired and fired and at the different compaction conditions represented by the different colors, we see that the rate of water ingress increases with a decrease in the compaction force. This is clearly due to the fact that compacting the powder at a lower compaction force results in a higher porosity and hence a faster rate of liquid transport. And now if we compare the different heat treatment conditions at the same compaction force, we see that the rate of water ingress increases with a decrease in the firing temperature, as firing the sample at a, a lower firing temperature results in a higher porosity and hence a faster rate of liquid transport. Although the, the unfired samples have the highest porosity, such samples have slower rate of liquid transport compared to the fired samples at the same convection condition. This can be attributed to the differences in the surface properties of the fired and unfired samples, as the unfired samples contain some polymeric additives, which are removed during the firing process. Such polymeric additives can uh, impact the wettability and hence the rate of liquid transport. In order to further investigate this, contact angle, the contact angle measurements uh, were conducted to measure the wettability of the, of, the, of the samples by water. And now if we look at the results of the initial contact angle of the different alumina samples of the, of the unfired and fired samples, where the, uh, the same color represents specific uh, heat treatment condition and the different, each sample like represents a specific convection condition, we see that the unfired samples have larger contact angle values compared to the fired samples at the same compaction force, indicating that the unfired samples have lower wettability and hence a lower rate of liquid transport. This confirms the observations in the terahertz results. To further analyze the liquid transport kinetics of the different alumina samples, a simple power law described in this equation was used to model the liquid transport kinetics of the alumina samples, where K is a fitting parameter that describes the rate of liquid transport into the sample. A larger value of K indicates a faster rate of liquid transport, and the exponent M describes or defines the type of the transport mechanism, where an M value of 0.5 indicates that the mass transport mechanism is considered as Darcy flow, which is driven by a gradient in the capillary pressure throughout the porous system. And a value of M between 0.5 and 1 indicates that the transport process is anomalous transport. By fitting the power law to the terahertz liquid transport data, we get the values of the K and M for the different alumina samples. So we can see that the K parameter increases with an increase in the porosity of the sample within each heat treatment condition. And we also see that the unfired samples have lower values of K compared to the fired samples at the same compaction condition. And again, this is due to the presence of the polymeric binder. If we look at the values of M, we see that the, all of the alumina samples have a value of M of around 0.5 indicating that the mass transport mechanism is, consi is considered to obey Darcy flow, which is driven by capillary pressure gradient throughout the porous system, and allows us to use the locus Wishman equation for further analysis. An interesting parameter that we can get from the 
terahertz liquid transport data along with the locus Wishburn equation is the hydraulic radius. So the locus Wishburn equation describes an analytical model that expresses the position of the liquid front in a porous system as a function of time. This uh, model describes an important mass transport phenomenon referred to as Darcy flow, which is driven by a capillary pressure gradient throughout the porous system. In this formalism, the porous space is assumed to be consisting of cylindrical uniform capillary tubes, as shown in this figure. Therefore, the filtration depth of a, of a liquid with specific surface tension and dynamic viscosity as a function of time can be expressed as in this equation for a laminar flow. By fitting the uh, locus Wishburn equation to the terahertz experimental uh, data of the liquid transport, we get the hydraulic radius. We see that the hydraulic radius increases with an increase in the uh, porosity of the sample within each heat treatment condition. Now if we compare the hydraulic radius with the medium pore radius obtained from the mercury porosimetry measurements, we see that there is a linear relationship between the hydraulic radius and the medium pore radius. And we also see that an increase in the medium pore radius results in an increase in the hydraulic radius which drives the water to transport faster through the sample. So we've seen that the terahertz pulse imaging has great potential for studying the liquid transport kinetics of ceramic powder compacts, such as alpha alumina powder compacts. And we've seen that both the macrostructure properties, such as porosity, uh, as well as the surface properties, the, that is, wettability, have an impact on the uh, water transport kinetics in the alpha alumina powder compacts. Such important information is very crucial for enhancing the design of the catalyst materials uh, during the manufacturing processes such as impregnation and drying. Such information is also important for improving the performance of catalytic materials upon contact with the liquid during the heterogeneous catalysis where we have uh, liquid phase reactions catalyzed over heterogeneous solid catalysts. And finally, I would like to thank my sponsors, Johnson Methy and the EPSRC for their funding, and my supervisor, Professor Axel Zeiter, and all of the academic and industrial collaborators who have contributed to this work. And finally, a uh, special thanks goes to my group members of the Terahertz Applications Group. Thank you so much for listening.